Today I hope to give you a glimpse into uh, how I streamline the chaoticness that goes in on my head, goes on in my head, uh, into something manageable. What are the amazing tools that I use to make life a little bit less crazy? To top it all off, I have been professionally diagnosed a few months ago with ADHD, inattentive. I am currently on medication to manage that, and uh, that just makes a lot of sense. Like, I'm always doing the new things, but I struggle to see projects through to the end, but we're working on that. It would only be a slight over-exaggeration if I said my life is a constant chaotic mess, because somehow i managed to get things done people are often like how do you have a youtube channel and tutor languages and you're a language coach and you teach design at university and you're doing your master's degree and you had a full-time job until three months ago and i hope for those of you who have been asking hey i saw you've been diagnosed with adhd how do you get things done this video is for you. I use a variety of digital and traditional tools, such as a paper planner and some digital apps. My chair is spinning too much. Um, I've tried tools like Notion and Obsidian, and they've been a little bit complex for me, not in the sense that my pea brain cannot understand them, but like, I need something quick. I need something simple. Your girl's impatient. And when I was using Notion, I was trying to customize everything, trying to power those databases. And at one point I was like, is this really helping me get things done? Uh, and the answer is no. <laughs> and Obsidian I found really cool because it was a little less um, distracting than Notion, but I couldn't customize it as much as I wanted. So I was looking for something right in between those two. So my key factors for productivity tools are a combination of customization because I am artistic, I am a designer, I like to make things look good, but they need to be practical, sensible, and streamlined. First thing I wanna show you is exactly how I organize all of my crazy thoughts into Apple Notes. Every thought, every piece of information floating around in my head goes into Apple Notes first so that I don't forget it. And then later I will move that into where it needs to be, paper planner, calendar, X tiles, email, whatever it needs to be. And so my starting point of collecting information is Apple Notes. Feature I use the most on Apple Notes is the smart folder. So you can set it up easily. And if you just make a tag, it'll automatically categorize it into a folder for you. The second tool that I wanna show you is X tiles. Now, this is something that truly meets my requirements between customizability to change things up exactly how I need it, plus something that is simple and quick. What I really like about X tiles is the pre-made templates so that I can set something up and tweak it to how I want in under like three minutes. You can create a number of spaces for yourself. So me in particular, I have a personal space, one for content creation and one for language coaching. In my personal space, I have trip planning, meal planning and uh, daily organizing. Over here, I used one of their templates to create a trip plan for my recent trip to Malawi and Zambia. It's really nice as you can embed widgets and images here. And what I like so much is you can resize literally everything. This is the customizability part that I like. For those of us who are more visually inclined, you can change the color, the size, the layout of your widgets. You can add emojis. What you can do also, which really helps me organize myself, is assign a calendar date to a task. Let's go up here for instance. Uh, let's say that I didn't exchange my South African rand for Zambian kwachas. I can click on the calendar here and I can say, okay, if I'm going on my trip next week, I need to do this by the 30th. You can also add a reminder for myself. Let's say I am gonna forget, which I'm very likely to do, Add a reminder one day before. Everything is streamlined and organized into one space. I've connected this to my Google Calendar, but you'll see here on the 30th, it has actually put in the task that I just created to exchange money and I can put it on the 30th and tick it off when I've done. All of the tasks that I've put across the whole X tiles, I'll find in one space here called my tasks. It does pull from my Google Calendar and everything else that I've put down, you'll see in my tasks here. I'm also using this to plan my trip for Japan. Another really cool feature is that you can combine tabs at the top. So let's say I wanna change this just from Japan to travel 2024. 
and I've got Japan over here. So I'll go into my previous trip planning and I'm gonna copy this to the space that is called Travel 2024. I'm gonna open where I've moved it and you'll see this is now my travel board. I wanna rename this to Zambia and Malawi. And I'm gonna give Japan a nice color as well. But I can go here on the overflow menu, the three dots and say, add to a new group. Let's say my group name here is uh, Africa. And then I can add a group name to Japan, which is Asia. If I'm going to Korea, I can create another page and I wanna add it to the group of Asia. You'll see it categorizes it nicely here into Asia so that if I click on the drop down arrow, I can toggle between the pages. In my personal, in my personal space, I also have the daily plan and I have pulled this from a template that is called the ADHD daily planner. How you can find the template is by clicking on templates at the top here. And there is such a wide variety of unique templates to suit every style that you have and you can customize them. Lastly, I will show you my daily plan, which I have built out from a template that I found as well. I put my priorities here because I tend to write too many things that I need to do. So these are things that I need to do today. I have forgotten about that task. Good thing I wrote it down. Time blocking. A nice idea is to have three blocks, one for the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. So you're catering for your breaks and you don't get too overwhelmed by working for like a million hours at the same time. So I'm gonna be opening this every day. I wanna have a music widget. I have just popped in a link from my Spotify and I'm just gonna scoot this up. And now I have a nice music widget, which I can scoot around. I'm gonna put it right here at the top and then scoot my distraction list over there. Now you've had a pretty good insight into how I use X tiles to organize my life. So if this is something that you're interested in, there is a link with a discount in the description. So be sure to check out X tiles today. Touching on the note of being a very sentimental person who likes to remember everything, my paper journal is so precious to me. When I was in Zambia and Malawi last week, I used my paper journal to document pretty much everything that happened. And if I don't write down everything that has happened that day, I'm gonna constantly be like, what if I forget that? I need to tell that person. What if in like a year, I'm gonna be like, where was I a year ago? have to write it down. It just helps me quiet in my brain if I brain dump everything at the end of the day. The paper planner I use, I have been using probably for around six years. I got it in Japan and it is from the brand High Tide and I absolutely love how it is structured. It forces me to try and reduce my daily tick list, my daily checklist to three items. Most of the time I go over that, we're still working on that, but it also gives me sufficient space to write down everything that's happened that day and some place to have logs and trackers as well. Here is the page from my trip to Zambia and Malawi last week. You'll see that I have filled in absolutely every space to write about the interesting things that I experienced. And in this sense, it's not necessarily a productivity tool, but it's something that helps my mind um, just be more at ease because I have all of these thoughts floating around. ADHD brain is uh, always noisy. I recently discovered that there are people who can literally think about nothing. Like how can you shut off your thoughts? I have a song playing, I have two songs playing in my head. I have random language phrases floating around like, oh, that vocab word, blah, blah. I'm also like, oh, I need to do this thing tomorrow. No, oh, I haven't thought about that person. I should call him. My brain does not shut up. So by having a paper planner, I can be like, okay, connecting brain to pen to paper, get it all out. And then I can sleep with a bit less of a noisy brain because I know that I have put those thoughts into another space. Then I submitted my master's dissertation just over three weeks ago, and I would not have gotten my thesis done if it were not for these next things. First one is focus mate. The second one is paper calendar, which is different from a planner. The third one is like my sticker book. I'm just gonna call it that. Let's start with focus mate. 
Focus Mate is something that I have been using since the Panini. The idea of Focus Mate is uh, it's basically a body double. Body double is somebody who kind of just sits there with you. And just the fact of having them in your presence or virtual presence makes you feel more motivated. So on Focusmate, I book a session from ranging from 25 minutes to 75 minutes. You can choose and it will match you with somebody else who is also working on a project for which they need to be focused. When I was really in the thick of writing my thesis, I would book like 50 to 75 minute blocks with breaks in between on Focusmate. And at the start of the session, you tell the person what you're working on. So, hey, my name is Lindy, I'm writing my thesis, and in this session, I hope to finish uh, editing these two sections. Other person will introduce themselves, say, I'm working on this app I'm building and I want to fix this bug, etc. You start the session and you kind of just have them be on screen next to you. You can obviously minimize the window. Just the idea that, okay, someone else can see my face or you could screen share it's like if i stand up and leave now this person's gonna feel betrayed and that completely messes up the point of having somebody there to motivate you with your work and then at the end of the session when the little bell rings you say hey how was the session for you oh it was great i managed one and a half out of the two sections awesome good work how was it for you oh i fixed my bug and i stayed focused fantastic all the best, cheers, and maybe you'll match again, add them to your favorites, whatever. Number one, great way to stay motivated. Number two, nice way to make friends. And number three, literally could not finish my thesis without this. Next thing is my paper calendar. Now, this is more of a discipline and motivational tool that helped me feel like I am getting things done and I am reminding myself that I am capable of doing hard things. So I have this physical calendar on my desk where I challenged myself to do five hours or more of thesis writing every single day. And at the end of the day, I would just count up the hours, which I just logged in Apple Notes or on a sheet of paper. And I write it with a pink marker every day on the calendar. And for some reason, this made me feel like, hmm, my progress is tangible. I can see myself getting things done. Well, for a few days in a row, I've done more than five hours doing all the things. Now, this one is so fun. I had such a great time <laughs> staying on track with this. It is a lines with square notebook by a Korean brand called Millimeter Milligram. So far, I've only seen them in Korea and Japan, but maybe you can order them online. I saw these adorable pink stickers, my absolute favorite color, and I was like, hmm, I want to buy them. Don't yet know what I'm going to use them for. But then I was like, huh. Hmm? And then I had the great idea of every little piece of to-do that I had in my dissertation, things I had to edit, descriptions I needed to add. I wrote it at the bottom of a block. And then once I did it, I had the satisfying activity of sticking the sticker on the page. And I could have this visual progress of, wow, I have completed all my tasks uh, versus, oh, I needed to finish that. And I actually never read um, this author. It's like a traditional to-do list that you have on your computer, tick, 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 done, move on, except it is um, more fun for me. And this was really what kept me motivated because I held this um, by my desk as I was working, finish the section, stick a sticker. It feels like eating a piece of candy as a reward for doing your work. This was so good for me. Next one is a wonderful tool that I have mentioned in another video. It is Scrintle and they are like a digital mind mapping whiteboard tool. And this is also something that I use both for language learning organizing, as well as what I used extensively through my dissertation. What I enjoyed about Scrintle specifically is being able to use arrows to connect ideas and I could add images to it I was writing my dissertation on uh, poster design in post-World War II Japan. So obviously I had a lot of images to work with and analyze. And I was trying to connect the themes that I was writing about of otherworldliness, death, aura, not the meme aura, but Benjamin's aura, um, uncanniness, all the different themes that I was writing about. I needed to find a visual way to map these out. So, so Scrintle was good for me to be able to see basically all of my research ideas in one place, have it be visual, have it be digital, so that if I'm working on my thesis in Japan or Malawi or South Africa, 
I have everything in one place. There you have it, a wide array of my paper and digital tools that help me keep my life sane as somebody with ADHD. Thank you so much for watching. I'm interested in hearing your productivity ideas as well. If you have ideas for the next video, something you want me to discuss more, let me know, and then I will see you in the next video. Bye!